Blue Smooth listeners and viewers from our YouTube channel, we are here, yes, with uh, Greta van Vliet. And welcome to Holland, because you have a Dutch name, yes. after the band. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is our first time here. You know, so uh, the first show of the tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know it's a kickoff of a world tour. I mean, and um, well, to get in it right away, it's it's sold out. How how does that make you feel, even before the first show? Well, I'm not sure. We really knew we had a lot of fans here, so yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's really humbling to see that reaction, especially like you know across the pond too. And that's Pleasant really, surprise. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope it's not just the name is relatable. <laughs> that's what it is. That's the name. Well, now to, when I read when I read the name, I thought, oh, that'd be a singer-songwriter, a nice, young, beautiful girl, and <laughs> and then we. I, I, mean <laughs> 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 I I dated a girl who uh, was called Van Vliet in, in the old days, but that's oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Now I heard I heard what the name. <laughs> I will not go in there now because I know what your name come from. I will blend it in in the text in the in the video. But it's a, it's a and it's an awful funny story. It is, and I'm I'm all I'm just glad that you didn't call it getting wood. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, right? Could have been wood. that. Yeah, I'm just as to, easily. I'm going down yeah. to see getting wood this morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. tonight. <laughs> 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 Holland, uh, how it is in the in the birth town of Eddie Van Halen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. We actually have a town in, in Michigan called uh, Holland, and it's, it's like, it has a real windmill fro that was completely transported brick by brick, and uh, you can get clogs there. <laughs> Which Sam is really interested I'm in getting. Yeah. He's really, he yeah. really wants it. If I can get a pair of clogs while I'm here. Yeah. No. Yeah. Tour, are you, are you also uh, planning to see something of the cities or the, the towns you're in, or is it too tight yeah. schedule? It's, it's been a real well, difference between touring in the States, you know, and touring over here. So it's, it, it, even this morning we were out in the, on, on the town, you know. And so I think it's really, for us, it was really important to see everything we could while we were here for now. And then, you know, we'll be back and, and hopefully see, because it's, you can't see everything in one, in one visit. There's no way. No, but if you have such a little bit of feel, and at yeah. least in which town, which town you are, or what, 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 what it looks like, that would be fine. Um, but tonight, um, first time show, um, what makes it so special for you? Is there any, any new stuff you're going to do on stage, or is it uh, mostly? This is our first live show, actually, in a very long time. So we're, we're going to see how things translate, and it, it definitely is going to be different. Yeah, I feel like, you know, because we've been in the studio quite a bit, and um, so we, we usually when we get out of the studio, we're, we're pretty tight, you know, because we're used to just playing something over and over and over and really getting close together. So it should be really interesting to see how that's, how we sound. And hopefully <laughs> we're, just, just tight. we're just as curious as the audience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well... We say it's like that baking pen case. The, the first one is always getting uh, <laughs> thrown away. <laughs> so you'll probably be the best tomorrow. <laughs> no, no kidding. The audience, audience will get you through. Right? We'll get you through. Um, we're talking about recording. You released an EP. And it seems to me that was something to give the audience something before you get the real album out. Yeah. If, you, if you have a tour, you have something to sell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I think... Um, we're we don't really we've been working for a while on on the full length you know um it's been what uh, three months does that sound about right yeah well, three and months, it's three kind months. of we're looking at it, it's, it's kind of coming to a close you know we're kind of wrapping certain things up and we're really excited to get that out hopefully you know in in midsummer or something is the time for songwriting on this tour do you plan it, or is it in the tour bus? Hey, I, I got an idea. Listen. It's always time for songwriting, even on the stage. That's why when you ask the question, "Is there going to be something new tonight?" It's almost positively, yeah, there'll be, <laughs> and we won't even see it coming. Yeah, you know? I, I can't tell you how many songs we've actually written during a concert. Yeah. Now that that's another question because I know some bands are sticking to the set list and even to the length of the song with no, no improvisation at all. And you guys into some improv on stage? Much so. I Absolutely. think that's one of our strongest suits, I think, and you know, because it's like if you, it, it was a early on, like the philosophy of this we started early on, it's like if you go to a show and they're playing the exact same thing that, the, you know, that it sounds like on the CD or the record, you could put it in, you might as well just put it in the CD and listen to it, you know, and so it's like, 
so it's like if we were capable of playing and expanding and you know toying with things and experimenting during the songs and jamming around then we would and I think that we do that quite a bit so yeah it's always it's always fun for me when that starts to happen because you yeah. know you're all communicating and it's like you get a feel of where everyone's at yeah. in the show and it's and it's the cool. show and the show's different every night a lot of energy comes out of just being innovative on the stage and, and having fun with each other you know <laughs> I think you should, otherwise yeah. it's going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What's you, you, you became a position to go to work. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No. What's the point of playing the same song? Same way, no, same time. It, yeah, to click every night. I think it'd be very boring after a while. I yeah. think it'd be yeah. pretty bored. I think I'd be bored the first time we played it. Yeah. I'm already bored just talking about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, um, it's a, well, well, I'm looking for the proper English word, sorry for that, but it's, um, it's a band thing, writing songs, I understood. Yeah. It's not someone yeah. who said it's my song or getting uh, all the credits for it. It's a, who, who comes up mostly with the, with the lick and then it, it evolves? Is that in the studio? I guess if you're brothers, it's easier than... Yeah. It could be anybody. It's, it's, it, I think it's, um, it's fair to say that it's, it's even, you know, for the most part. I know that a lot of the, the riffage stuff that initiates a lot the songwriting process is Jake for the most part, you know. But that's not to say that none of us have haven't done that. And then of course, once that's happened, it, it's a free for all as to what else happens to that song, you know. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like whoever brings this the <coughs> the the structure of the song to the table, it, it's always up to the the every individual what they imp what implement into that. So it's like everybody. It's like a song is really made up of four, four parts and four people. Yeah. Well, it looks to me, if you brought us, uh, if I was one of brought on a tour bus, I guess I would kick him out after three kilometers. Because <laughs> 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 so yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, is there never ever uh, a, a part in the, of, of a moment that you say, well, it's my sibling, I kick him out, or yeah. <laughs> don't talk to me for an hour? And right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Just how it goes, you know, you just have your space for a bit and then you come back when you're ready, you know. I mean, I think we've gotten pretty good at uh, trying to treat each other well because, you know, in, the, we, you know, in past discrepancies we've had some, <laughs> we've had some issues, you know, we, we physically fighting each other and, and <laughs> putting a yeah, fist yeah, in the yeah. You love somebody, but, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, it's because you love them that you beat the hell out of them. That's well, it's good that we're, we're boys because we can just get pissed off at each other and... <laughs> Probably yeah. about ten minutes later, it's fine. Yep. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Even for a brand name like Greta Van Vliet. <laughs> um, um, what about the, oh yeah, the, the, um, the lyrics? I guess they're coming second if you write the song, well, or the lyrics probably come last. You know, there's the feel of the song, and uh, and then the melody will come, and then it's like, well, what does this feel like? What is the universe t telling me this is? What is the song telling me it is? You know, and then it, it, and then it, it it's a reflection on on you know, a lot of the time for me it's the it's human condition or the human elements, you know, he, you know the human experience that kind of thing and what does that mean and so I think a lot of like fairly philosophical texts probably had something to do with uh, influencing in, in influencing the the writing. Well, the. As I told by, s by a lot of people, this writing a song is like writing a book. It has to be as a beginning, a middle, and the end, and you have something to tell about. Yeah. Well, not all of it you know, has to be so deep, too. You know, like uh, safari or, or highway isn't isn't. You know. They don't <laughs> ask any uh, philosophical yeah. questions that will uh, make you uh, question what you're doing and uh, make you question your ways of life. <laughs> say that. Yeah, well, you know, like the whole thing. It, those are kind of more of that real blues-based uh, material, you know, where it was kind of uh, talking about about uh, your woman and 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 and. Well, well, well. I didn't want to go this <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. it was more blues roots oriented, you know. You know? Yeah. Well, I think if you tell what you were excited about, but some people have always political uh, agendas or uh, experiences, like um, the Sam Cooke song you did was, in, 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 a, in the end, was a political song. Yeah. It was, yeah. you know. It's about oppression, I think, and that, for me, is a broad um, subject and something that should be talked about, you know. Yeah. Can you give a percentage of... Um, 
How many blues are still in uh, Greta van Vliet at this moment? Quite a bit. Oh yeah, it's, I think it's still right at the heart of the whole thing, you know. Yeah, I think I think that me mainly listening to all the blues records growing up and like having that influence. I think that that was the very first time that we all connected musically is through yeah. the blues. So I think it that's kind of at the center point of, of everything that we we do, and it's always really blues influenced still. Yeah, that was one of those strange things that I, even us listening to the blues obviously were just like. Uh, you know, we did come from a broken sort of, you know, we did... You never have to pick cotton. We, yeah, right we didn't come right. from any of that. But we can connect with it as people. I think that's part of what makes blues so axiomatic is that it, 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 it anybody can, can feel the blues, experience the blues and listen to the blues and know what that means, you know? Mm -hmm. But a lot of people will say, isn't, isn't the blues tremendously upsetting to listen to? And you, you think about it, and I never thought about it as something that's upsetting to listen to. I think of it as a, as a triumph of an entire culture mm -hmm. and a uh, beautiful art that's, that's come forth and all that. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a win in the, in the whole grand scheme of things. Yeah, I mean, that came early on. And I mean, you ask about what kind of, like, the, the blues influence in the band. And, and if you're really listening to a lot of that, what we get out of a lot of the blues is they're singing about freedom, you know, about... Yeah, about all that, and so I guess there's a lot of that in, in our music too. I think it's like about freedom. Blues is always about hope, yeah. and hope is always uplifting. Mm -hmm. So they sung, not they feel depressed, but they want to feel didn't want to feel depressed. That's why they sang. Yeah. One of one of the reasons before then, of course. And um, the good thing is, and that's why we. Uh, talked earlier in the introduction of the interview, we are not blues Nazis, we not stick in the 50s or the 30s or the 60s or whatever. Yeah. We like when people, and obviously it's a very obvious in your kind of music that you picked it up somewhere a couple of years ago by the time we heard it for the first time, but they picked it up from somebody else and you doing your own stuff with it. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah it's kind of like it's always somebody's gonna have to pick up from where it left off and, and, and evolve with it, you know? All artists. Yeah. Yeah. And I bet there were a bunch of young white kids <laughs> bring the blues. <laughs> you wonder where that first, like, song or that first, like, melody came from. Or, you know, the, the, the ancient storytellers. And it makes you think, like, where, who was the first person inspired by... And, like, wh wh where did that come from? Were they inspired by a story and it just evolved from there? Well, exactly. my opinion is they didn't have television, though you have to yeah. tell each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make a rock painting, or... Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, but I guess people, entertaining people, is of all ages. It's just that need that in the human soul to make art, you know, whether it's painting on a wall or if it's painting on a canvas. Yeah, there's like an innate, like, a primal, primal urge to, to tell a story, you know, or to, or to share the love of... Uh, the you know the, the wonderment of the universe and things like that and to you know kind of be skeptical maybe more like what's the word maybe more appropriate uh, maybe uh, in it's it being interested intrigued intrigued by the by the um, the not seen you know how's it the build up of your audience is it mostly youngsters or are still the people who like the old geezers from the 60s and the 70s yeah. like us like us tell, tell it like it is <laughs> <laughs> it's everybody you know and so i think that this is a really interesting thing that it's just kind of well it is for everybody you know and to see everybody show up you know i mean it'll be like young kids who their, who their parents bring you know or some some teenagers who find it themselves or and then the, then of course it'll be the uh It'll be it'll be like the whole family. You know? It'll be like the kids and their parents, and then their parents' parents showing up. And it's funny because the younger ones are in the front, and it'll, it'll go back. You know, <laughs> yeah. There's that it's like that great thing about uh, a unity or that experience when you see like an audience. But they're also ver varying ages, and it's like you see all of these people together, all united by music and at all different ages, and it's really cool to see them. Well, we love it because there's hope. Yeah. There's hope for decent music. There's hope for that not people show up with a briefcase with an USB stick and it and then yeah. call it music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no kidding. So I'll, I'll old fashioned guitar work and singing. A um, couple of questions about the instruments. Are you um, 
you know, what do you call it? guitar buffs. That you're real into the gear, you know. If you, you mostly want to play a Gibson 59 Sunburst. Somewhat, I think. I think that uh, we're interested in that. I mean, it's oh, pedals. Yeah, it's interesting. And as a guitarist, I don't use too many pedals because I don't like it to be something of a distraction from my ability to play. Let's just say this: know? How many uh, pedals did Freddie King use? Yeah. Right. <laughs> too. It's like Sam said, said it this before we started the interview, but it's not the guitar, it's the guitar. So it's like well, the, the, the best um, documentary I've ever seen was It Might Get Loud. Yeah, exactly. And that's another thing, it's like with Jack White and all that too, it's like it's not necessarily the instrument. At the very beginning of that, he was setting up, you know, just a board, a nail, yeah, a string, and a pickup. And, mm -hmm. um, and just use a bottle as a slide, and it was, it sounded awesome, you know, it's like, that's the sheer motion through it. So I, you know, I think we focus on some of the gear and stuff. It's always been fascinating. Yeah. But um, more of, more of what sounds interesting. I you know anything that can really kind of take shape and, and, and be different than just an average guitar. Yeah, gear's fascinating for sure because it really does shape your tone. You know, from your fingers or whatever, and it it brings it into something pretty unique. And I always try to pull myself out of the gear hole a little bit because once you get too deep, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like, uh, it's, you forget that it's not, it's not the gear that's really making that emotion, it's to you. Right. And then you've got the edge and that, I mean, it might get loud. Yeah. It was very much the opposite. It was very gear buff and just all pedals and this massive and all thing. double. All yeah. The, uh, all this, if something broke me as a, as a Set. Yeah. Exactly the same. What's cool is we just came from the studio too, so we've had a lot of time to kind of experiment with tones and yeah, lots of lots of snare drums. Well, I can imagine that you experiment with yeah, tones. Lots of gear. Yeah, and lots of yeah pedals. I I use pedals in the studio quite a bit just to play around with t different tones and stuff, but not live as much. And then you, of course, that's one of the things that's uh, if you hear the song, it's always in front of the your vocals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there something you train on, or you're, you're saying I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm still convinced that I get more even <coughs> than I can do now? I yeah, no, I, 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 being in the studio, like uh, these guys are saying, I feel like I, I be having time to kind of focus, you know, in an insular kind of way. It's, I've, I feel like I, c I continue to get better and and uh, and find more technique, and and broaden the spectrum of of even. V of stylistic yeah. things and, and you know cultural things that I learned that I think are really cool. You know, it's amazing because you can sing in the studio without fifteen hundred people watching you. So it's not not, not yeah. a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a completely different th experience too. You know that, and then of course with vocal mics, I've never realized that I don't like any you know hi-fi fancy stuff. You know, if you could just get me something that's ordinary, and then I can make all of those sounds myself, and I don't need you know. F any of those effects because I can achieve something like that, you know, like a little reverb's fine, you know, and a little compression, but n and anything past that I don't think is really necessary. Well, that's a God-given uh, present you got with, with that, that your voice is, is in a sense, an, an excellent instrument in the band. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So, and tonight, how do you react on the audience? Is it, uh, can, can you play for, I know you, you started out for, uh, a bar of 12 or 13 persons and now it's it's filled up 1100 tonight and it's, I, I i read in the bio that you're gonna play pink pop this year and uh, rock am ring in germany which had a yeah. real huge one opening up for uh, guns and roses so you're used to play for people in front of you and you have to play for people who are 50,000 people away yeah. <laughs> is that a different approach not really, huh? we just turn all the amps up. Yeah, you just <laughs> <laughs> you need to put, throw some mics on the drums. <laughs> yeah, no, like, I think it's just a matter of kind of showing up and, and uh, hopefully if you really are speaking to those people and you're trying to communicate with them, they reciprocate and vice versa, you know, it's like a communication that kind of with an energy in that room or that space. I always, uh, well, uh, something else on, uh, on stage, but I always know if you get a lot, you're always giving more back. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like it's kind of like playing catch in that way. <laughs> where, you know, you're throwing something out and they'll throw it back at you. And it's just, yeah, it's such an interesting thing. Yeah, it's kind of something that's really crazy about when people get together in mass amounts. Like, look at those revolutions you can see on television and things like that. It's like there's this, it's, there's this, um, 
kind of uh, momentum of energy when you get that many people together. And so those bigger rooms seem to, you, you seem to be getting a lot more energy. It's easier to kind of give it back, you know, as it comes to. Is it also, do you, after the show, you have to wind down for a couple of minutes? Yeah, absolutely. A little bit, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you're up there somewhere. <laughs> he, he definitely has to wind down. Yeah, no, the better the show is, the longer you have to wait. I mean, yeah, I guess you're just giving more. Yeah, I mean, he does his real physical, you know, so it's probably... Uh, you can always tell how good the show is, because I always take his vest and just <laughs> ring it out <laughs> in a cup and how much and I, I get. My mouth, yeah, yeah. You, you can tell how hot the show yeah, is. Yeah, usually if there's, like, two cops, then it was pretty good. <laughs> one cop, it's like, eh. Nah, we do better. Uh, some and in <laughs> the United States Cup, it's eight ounces. It's about eight ounces, yeah. Well, it was a sort of a burden on your shoulders. I was... Um, preparing for the interview as I was reading some some stuff they already wrote about you guys and they all see you as the torch bearer of the, the rock and roll and with a sold out show in front of you nowadays so you're now at the start of it and um, does it affect how you're acting or are you doing comparing with a couple of years ago there's an intense focus that seems to come about when you when you realize that there's a lot of people that have high expectations that the given you a responsibility or, you know, you bear some, some it's <laughs> just something like that. It's kind of, I think a focus probably has a real sincere focus that you, you kind of are able to, you know, hopefully look at it uh, and, and do what you do the, to the best of your ability in every sense, you know. Well, I'm really curious. Is there a master plan behind Greta Van Vliet? That mostly the question, if you, if you see yourself back in five years, where would you be? Is that even bigger stadiums or more produced albums, uh, you know? I think that it's really important for us to be able to play live, and um, I think we can still, as long as we're able to do it, and I, I you know, and, and we're I was a bit young now, so we can, <laughs> so we have the ability to do it, and I think that that's important for us to be able to speak to the audience and play for the audience, and and get out and play. So that's something that I think will never, you know, it'll never, it'll never die down as much. So I, I believe that, you know, in the years to come, I think that we want to reach as many people as we can. So larger yeah. audiences and things like yeah. that would be <coughs> more something so we can convey to inspire and more people to have fun with and, you know, something. Uh, like that. Yeah. And if you on that.